Hey everybody, so today I have uh, on the desk an A1990 15-inch MacBook Pro, and it needs a keyboard key. Uh, not just one keyboard key, it needed a couple, but I'm down to the last one. This is the uh, the only one that's really broken. So all the, a couple of them were just missing, and this one's actually broken. So what I do, I have um, a couple of donor keyboards. So these are just uh, dead keyboards or keyboards that were changed because something was wrong with them, missing keys or whatever. And uh, always good to keep these around. I have a good stack of them from all the different generations. Uh, I've been taking these out of the garbage for years while working for uh, Rossmer Repair Group. And uh, they're good to have around. You, if you're changing keyboards, keep the keyboards. You will wind up using the keys and the butterflies and the, the dome switches and everything like that sometime. So this one needed a couple keys. They were missing. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like. This is just a missing key, but there's something wrong with this one here that I can't just pop a key onto it. So if you take a look, these are the little um, tabs that the key grips onto. This one's missing. So if I try to put a key in here, it will wind up like just popping off sometime. And really actually dangerous to have loose keys on your keyboard. If you have loose keys on your keyboard, just get them out of there. Find something to do with them. Don't leave them in there. Because one time, you're going to have your laptop up in a, in a, a like standing position, and you're going to go close it, and that keyboard is going to break your screen. Don't, don't ever leave a loose key in your keyboard. It's very dangerous for this screen. And something like a 1990, this screen is going for like $700 right now. They're ridiculous. You don't want to lose a screen just because you have a loose key sitting on your keyboard. So let me show you what, it, what you need to do to remove a key on an Apple keyboard. So if we look, here's an I key. And for this one, for a 1990, you go to the top of the key, and you get underneath there, and you lift it straight up. I'm going to get a dental tool. So you take a, your, something small, something sharp, something flat. You could use a, a black stick. You can use a dental tool. You could use tweezers if you want. You get underneath the top of the key, and you lift up towards you. You lift up away from the machine. And those two will pop out. This one actually was not, was not clipped in, so... That I think we're going to find something bad under here. And then once you get the top off, you slide it towards the screen. And it comes right out. And that's there. That's there. Everything's there. Why was this one corner not clipped in? It's just spread out. I don't know if that comes across real well. That this one's small and grippy. This one's all spread out. So let's, let's actually change this I key as well. So I'm going to take the I key off of the donor, which is a lot easier because the aluminum's not around it. And now to, to reinstall it, you just put the bottom in first and slide down towards the trackpad. And then once that's ca caught, you need to make sure that they're, they're caught on their peg. So if they're not caught on their peg, it's going to be sitting up a little bit. You, you can tell when you're looking at it through a microscope or just looking at it if one's sitting up or not. So it's, it's, they're both hooked. Now we just push down on the top. And there you go. Now that's installed. So forget about that eye. That eye's garbage. But this one, we're, ne we're working on next to the eye here. This is the O key. And uh, this shouldn't look like this at all. Like in multiple levels here, this should not look like this. So we have one of the the pins are missing and the there's supposed to be a um, thin membrane on top of here that's missing too so here's what it's supposed to look like this is this is our donor so this is what we're going to be taking off to put in here so you see don't have to worry about this membrane this this membrane is just for dust and such it was a it, this was this membrane was a stopgap because of how terrible this keyboard design was. This was to try to stop the keys from getting caught up on dust and double typing and not typing. It didn't really work that well. It, it worked. I guess it worked enough. There, there was much less complaints after they uh, 
put this little uh, membrane on here. But you see this membrane is the one that's missing, which this also has a little rubber piece that allows the key to push down on the membrane switch, on, on the little clicky switch there. So we're going to just take all of this off, this, this clear support structure, the butterfly switch, the membrane, everything. We're going to take all of this off and we're going to put it in place of what's here. So I also see, I don't know if it comes through on camera, that should not be, it's, you can't see through it like I can. Inside that M structure is a bunch of green nastiness. Actually, let me, let me just, this, this is gone, this is garbage. Let me just pop this out. Yeah, that's not good. So even if this was installed right, this key's probably not typing. This is the contact that you have to short together to tell the computer that you just typed a key. This, I think this little one is connected to the end pads here, all four end pads, and this is the one that you either have to ground or power. I'm not sure which way the keyboard works. But yeah, that, that was not typing no matter what. That probably filled in like that because the cap has been missing for a while. So I'm going to start with uh, some compressed air, a can of compressed air. Get some of this junk out of here. And I'll take a, um, a brush. Try to get as much of this junk out now. Okay, then we'll take our dental tool and I'm just going to pull this clear support off. So this is um, double-sided taped I think on the bottom and it has these little um, through-hole things here. Uh, they're studs. They're, I think they're uh, melted studs or radio welded studs. Okay, we're not putting that back. We're not putting this back. So now we need to get in here and get this good and clean. So I'll take a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip. I roll the Q-tip on my pants to so that it's not a lot of alcohol where it's gonna like drip through into things. So watch how hard you push. This is the LED for the key. This little uh, square right here. That's the LED that lights up the key. On these newer keyboards, um, I find it a bit inefficient. I, I guess it does look good. There's an LED underneath every single key. The old keyboards didn't look bad enough to do that much of an upgrade. The old keyboards maybe had six or eight LEDs to light up the entire keyboard with just a, um, a spreader panel, a, a diffuser panel that diffused those uh, couple of LEDs through the whole keyboard. I think they look fine. I, I have no problem with that. Like, yes, this does look better, but that's opinion, really, if it looks better. I don't think it's better enough to justify the cost addance of a LED under every single key. And then it's got to be using a little bit more energy than just six LEDs. I guess they made enough energy savings on other parts of the machine that it doesn't matter that you're wasting a little bit more on all these LEDs. Okay, that's pretty clean. Let's get some more compressed air in there. See if I can dislodge that junk. Okay, I think we're ready to claim our donor one now. So now, 
Same exact way we took that off. We're, we're going to take this off. But we want to just be a little bit more careful with where and how we put pressure on things. We don't want to break anything on this one. I could care less if I broke the other one because that's just garbage. This one. Once you get one of the rivets out, the rest of it comes off pretty, pretty easily. Just with one rivet out, now you can just slide down to the other. We'll just slide across to the other side. Ideally, you would want the double-sided tape to stay on the clear thing that we're taking out, which it does seem to be doing for the most part. Maybe not. We're probably just going to have to put a dot of glue under it. Oop. Yeah, it did not stay on the... clear piece. Okay, now we got that. First we place the butterfly in the hole here, and then this goes down on top of the butterfly, because the butterfly has more pegs that sit inside this. And those rivets actually clicked in there a little bit, so that's pretty good. But now I want to put a couple of dots of glue under here, under here. I'm torn between using um, UV curable glue and, um, and just crazy glue. I don't know if this clear um, plastic here is going to block UV and not allow the glue to cure. So I'm just going to put a drop of crazy glue underneath there. I'm going to take my crazy glue, I'm going to get a little tiny drop on the end of my dental tool. And I'm just going to use the dental tool to get it right where I need it. That was not enough. Let's get a little bigger drop. Do that over something that I don't mind if it squirts. Okay, we got some crazy glue on that side. Now let's get a little bit on the other side. a little bit more on the first side. Now when this dries up, there's definitely not going to be any problem with this, uh, this key. You just have to be careful about how much you use. You don't want it going anywhere where you don't want crazy glue. Like right there. You don't want to glue that down. So let me try to get that out of there. looks much better if we put our key on. So take a look at this. Yeah, which way <laughs> which way is top for an O? Is it that way? Or is it that way? So if we look at the bottom of it, these are the ones that push straight in and those are the ones that slide. So that way. Just 
slide down, click. There you go, we got a working O key. All right. So, ooh, that's what I mean by, ooh, I don't think that, let me, let me adjust the camera so you can actually see what just happened. I think you can see what just happened. That N key. Let me get that on camera. That N key right there is loose. Now the other ones, that N key is loose. So let's get that N key out of there too, because this is this is the type that if this just gets dislodged one time while you're going to close your computer and it's just laying there and you close your computer and squeeze it closed, you just broke a $700 screen. So I'll grab our donor, our donor N key. So just lift from the top, pop, pop and then pull up towards the screen. Then slide from the screen down and then click, click. There you go. And now no more moving end key. All right. So there you go, how to change uh, just not only just a key, but actually the butterfly, butterfly and switch and how to clean out. Uh, so if you do have a key that's not working anymore, um, it's better to try to open it up and see if you can just clean it out and put it all back together just like I did, rather than changing the whole keyboard. Because changing these keyboards is awful. Unless you're buying the top case that comes with the battery and the keyboard installed and the touch bar, that's it's relatively easy doing that. But taking the keyboard out of this, like this, and, and putting a new one in there, not fun. Not, not easy, not fun, and um, not really worth it. I, I don't think so. But to each his own. So if you made it this far, thanks for... Uh, hanging out with me. Hope you learned something. See you guys later.